will help me. That's one idea. Second, I'll clean my one moment. I would like to study the effects of two generators. 
see two influence. As the first generator, I'll use our previous network from the stability. What is one? I will use this one. It's a toroidal transformer. Instead of two call put call, I will use this transformer. It, it will give me a little more stability. The idea about such transformers, when we have call put coils, here, yeah, simple. It's like simple transformer. Any outer influence can affect it. Is a, in case, where am I? In case of toroidal transformer, magnetic flux goes around its own, inside it. And outer field, they, uh, it, it's not uh, uh, any effect at all, but uh, the effect of outer fields is much smaller because anything what inducts here is balanced. If you have, let's say, this way going magnetic flux, Yes, it will induce some voltage on this side, but the same voltage will be induced on the other side, and some, some effect, uh, overall effect will be uh, near zero. Such transformer, they have the shortest possible uh, line of uh, magnet, uh, line of magnetic inductance, and also they are. Uh, Let's say we're sensitive to out field. Okay, let's use it. Let's see, we should get. A harmonic signal generator. That's what I'm hoping for. One coil like this, and it has an inner coil. So, all together, it's transformed. You can see now I have, let's say, we have a big distortions here, but overall, it's a harmonic signal generator. I can adjust. Frequency. So, once more. Yes. Resistance to the ground. Plus 250 volt DC. change capacity is changing the resonance frequency and the frequency at which system oscillates so overall I have a generator for 200 kilohertz I go up to 
down to 300 feet and up to some 800. Nice. But not enough. I do another one. More generators for the god of generators. Something different. Someone with a from the 60s. It, in general, it's a very similar network to one I just have assembled. But it's one very important difference. One second, I will. supply and to the school. We can see two signals. I'll draw schematics of the second network. The one I, rescu I rescued from the scrap. It was already at scrap yard. Capacitance. This part is very simple, 
the only output is taken with the help of uh, adjustable transformer. System. Another resonance contour. That's the idea. The load is resonance. But return, in fact, in fact, this part makes bad resonance. We have one resonant characteristic at output. But we also will have a resonant characteristic at return to resonant stage, to selective stage, in fact they are working in series. And what's the effect? See the uh, switch to experiment. What we got? This one with this transformer. You can see it's it's harmonic, but there is a small distortion. And this one much closer to ideal harmonic signal. The problem is loaded. Contour is not ideal. It's not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, ideal part. It's a narrow, let's say, hill. And distortions are possible. When we connect in series two filters, we, get, uh, we will get resulting characteristics, it's multiplication. And it's better. It's, as a result, we have a better voltage. It's so-called chamber schematics. To idea, if we need better quality of signal, we can use, on the one hand, we can use one very, very well made, uh, let's say, filter stage. But we can also use multiple less expensive stage but connected in series and obtain the same effect. The only problem, I have, how many edge masters I have here? One. This is frequency. Here, I need to adjust both inner, this part is called inner contour, and outer one. I have twice more adjustments. But it works. Okay, now, where am I? I have, let's say, one generator and two. Well, number one and number two. This will be number one, and this will be number two. Two generators. I want to sum. I'll use a very simple network. One, two resistors, each one Q ohm. Okay. 
This one goes here. One will go here. Okay, now we need to make it visible. Something like this. And it would be nice to to get an absolute value of it. Now I have I can come closer. Yeah, we can see the yellow. Here is the yellow one. It's a spring being a 
swan was and os I would like to get S4 S an absolute value for the God of Wars. Yeah, this will make image more stable. You can see some summary signal. It's so like sign and sign. Who cares that they form? Something like wave. And the blue one is, let's say, a margin line of this wave. So the yellow one is something like this. And the margin line of it will be this one. More objects. I want to finish one. But I still need some objects here. The last element will be this one. I 
I can turn camera this way. This one is ground and uh, yeah, the guy is not important. The important thing, I have attached via capacitor mm. the ball. My hand forms a capacitor. Mm -hmm. Change the frequency of the first generator. Yes, look at it. 
disassemble hook. the frequency difference is zero, output is near zero. If I change capacity in any direction, frequency shifts to the, no frequency high, no frequency low. Frequency are equal. We can see the blue line is zero. While signal yellow still exists. Frequency high. We got signal. Frequency are equal. No signal. The work generator produces produce lower frequency. Again, the difference change. I need a thinner book. Oh, this one. The book. Same effect. change magnetic contactants 
of transform. This way back.
But let's take some theory. At first, at first, let's do a more, let's say, more common rule. We have one signal. We have signal. What if we sound them? More general. But before speak about two signals, we need to understand one thing. We have signal as a function of time. We can perform a Fourier transform on it, and we will get as a result signal as a function of frequency. Let's be concrete, it will be signal spectral function. Let's first take a look on signals, energy. Any, let's say, image in a frequency space. Let's look. We have our signal loaded with one ohm resistance, and we have an energy of double. Beam. What can we write? Total energy will be in, from minus infinity to infinity S squared in time. I got one ohm resistance. It equals to integral minus infinity to infinity of my signal multiplied multiplied by 1 against 3 minus infinity to infinity my signal spectral function a power d omega this one is nothing the inverse Fourier transform performed on my signal spectral function. If we change integration sequence, And write our energy as 1 divided by double P from minus infinity to infinity spectral function 
omega uh, minus infinity to infinity. Who writes infinity? My signal, a power dot omega t d time. Oh! And what I got here? Something familiar? It's nothing else than the spectral function. It is my signal spectral function, but with negative sign at frequency. Or conjugated spectral function. If we have plus one plus something x being, let's say, a, I have x a plus b. Conjugate <coughs> will be A minus B. Conjugate. So in the green cloud, I have nothing else. When spectral function take it with, uh, at the negative frequency or conjugate spectral function. My signal energy is infinity to infinity s squared or uh, one begins to p infinity to infinity. My signal spectral function. My signal conjugated spectral function or, or one against p integrate in infinite machines by infinite from zero. If I multiply x with Conjugated x, what do I get? Model square. So it will be square the omega. is called as a Parseval theorem. It is known as a Parseval theorem. Connection between signals energy in time and in frequent space. Parseval theorem allows us to introduce one uh, One measurement called signal spectral density. One against P. Square. Signal spectral density. Signals energy 
distribution on frequency. Signal spectral density. And now we can take a closer look on a sum of two signals. Let's say we have all two signals on the one ohm resistance. So energy will be finite to infinity as one plus S X square D. We have two signals loaded with one ohm. And it is equal to one D and minus infinity to infinity. Uh, omega plus S two omega square the omega, and it's equal to the integ uh, if we integrate okay. uh, absolute value of the spectral sum. In a frequent space, it's by Parseval's theorem. To open this one. If we have, for, let's say, x plus y, it's the same x plus y multiplied by x con conjugate plus y conjugate. So we can Right. What we can write? E of minus infinity is one plus e infinity to infinity is two square from e plus. Double is one is equals equals. I have open as a as a school mark. I have open uh, square of sum. It will be equal to one against p multiplied by. Infinite to infinity, the S1 from omega, the S1 conjugate from omega, the omega plus infinite to infinity, the S2 from omega, the S2 from omega, the omega plus. Plus infinite to infinite S one from omega S two conjugate from omega plus S one conjugate from omega S two from omega not conjugate the omega. Yeah. Um.
and okay this one maybe should be in round pies and this one in square yeah looks like I have collected everything lot of integrals but if we take a look on this one and this one what do we see? the Paxavan theory they are equal the same with this one and this one they are equal. So, I can put in green one. This one should be equal to this one. Blue and red are signals themselves without any martial effect. So the green one is the difference between signals, let's say in vacuum, free signal with, without any uh, without any interability or, say, or interference. Go to or to see interference without any interference to second signal. And only the green quote is the difference. So the green cloud is an interference energy. This energy will not be zero. In theory, such signals can coexist in one transfer medium. If this energy is below some error threshold, okay, we can we can evaluate relay theorems uh, te uh, tells us about signal interference. If this energy greater than zero, signals are coherent. And being in one environment means they will pro uh, produce some mutual effects. Hmm. Interesting thing. Uh, Non-coherent signal always form an orthogonal system. But orthogonal sine and cosine form orthogonal system. But they are coherent. We saw it. When two. Oh, 
let's say, when the sine or cosine, not important, when two harmonic signals are put together, they produce some effects. If they would be non-coherent, we saw no output at all. But we saw the blue line here. So, they are coherent and they, when put in one system, produce some result. This part is, uh, let's say, the um, interoperation energy. Oh, Relator, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of framework or umbrella idea. If signals are coherent, we will see interference. And some, uh, some kind of third signal being product of first two. In our case, we saw a nice, very nice example when both signals are harmonic. With one, only one frequency. The spectral function, it's kind of delta function. Ideal, ideal between spectral line. The interference is very easy to analyze. If we have S1, S1 max, let's say, cosine omega 1 t, and S big S2 cosine omega t. We can very easily analyze, we can draw a vectorial diagram. Let's say this one is S1 max, rotating with the speed omega 1. I can draw a circle. Case S2 rotating with the speed omega 2. Easy. Easy. Resulting. Here is the resulting one. S1 cross S2. Resulting vector. For the case of harmonic signal, we can use a simple vectorial diagram. This one.
there in situation where delta omega omega one omega two. So delta omega was much smaller than the both frequencies. We were at zero. This is not important. Important what, what we will see. We can continue what we will see. Okay, if they We have S1 plus S2 max. At this point, we have S1 minus S2. You understand? Frequency. This outer line has a frequency of delta omega. But what with inner frequency? must be we can write this uh, as summer it's a uh, summer it's amplitude S S S S S S S uh, square root of S one square plus S two square max plus plus double S one S Cosine of this angle. I'm just applying uh, if this is S1, S2. I'm applying Cosine theorem from the school geometry. The maximum value is the whole. Since the whole uh, picture uh, rotates, let's say, with the frequency omega one, this one rotates with omega two. But what what about bet? Bet. Will be in my 
minus uh, delta omega. When they, when the, uh, if we say frequencies are equal, they will be on a one line. Oh, it's ideal case with zero uh, starting angle. And bed will be P radiant. They will be on the one line. If omega to differs, this one will rotate. But angle, we need not this one. This angle is omega 2 time. Relatively, to, relatively what this line rotates with the speed omega 1 time. Its, it's angle is omega 1 time. This line has a speed omega 2 and rotates as omega 2 by time. The difference will be omega 1 minus omega 2. And to get this angle, I need to take, since at zero position, it will, it will be P radiant. This one will be P radiant. So beta is P minus delta omega time. Summary signal can be yes, can be written as takes uh, mm -hmm. S one done multiplied by cosine one plus mm, S two max S one max Plus, plus, double, S2 max divided by S1 max, cosine, uh, delta omega. Here is the law for the sum of signal. Why? We are interested in this. First, it's funny. The second one. When we need, we have, let's say, large power system, connection point, and generator, AC generator. We need to synchronize generator with the system with minimal disturbance. If we switch oh, a generator, in, uh, let's say we switch in such position without synchronizing, what it means? At a switch moment, we will have current a generator minus a system vectorial divided by sum of reactants. We will have terrible, they will come together. We will have terrible mechanical load and we will have very high connection current. It's not a good idea to switch generator to system without synchronizing. We should make the difference between system and generator at a switch moment this dealt as small as possible. This will reduce mechanical load, mechanical effect on the generator. It's very bad idea to use a self-synchronization on megawatt class of generator. So, we will have two voltage 
transform. One giving us system voltage, second generator voltage. The sum is the same bits what we saw. Uh, This one has a, the frequency difference, and if we take an absolute value, we will have so called, it's so look like this, be it's voltage, when this voltage is zero, can switch generator without any mechanical impact. how to synchronize generator with the system. Okay now. Something quite uh, something close to absolute value of a cosine. Can we try it? Do we have time? time for another experiment. Oh, the blue line. We can see it's not ideal. It has distortions. I can play with amplitude of signal.
still not ideal I have reduced 10 times not so ideal This way better. Now it's closer to ideal cosine. Yeah, but what about This was the wall of the outer or borderline, the blue line on my small scope. But what about the inner line? Sign it's double frequency. The inner line has a frequency. If this one, if the white line has a frequency delta omega, omega one minus omega, the inner line has a frequency omega one plus omega. Quite a pure, pure cosine. No, nice picture. Borderline is quite harmonic and output. The blue line, this one, inner or cosine. Good moment. The one is two volts, a little bit. Quite a good difference. signals are not coherent, result is zero. They are, not, they are full independent. If they are coherent, we receive a complex spectrum determined, in fact, by first signal spectral function multiplied by uh, 
conjugated spectral function of the second signal plus first signal spectral function conjugated multiplied by uh, spectral function of the second signal. In case of two ideal harmonic signal, both spectral function contains two lines, plus omega minus omega. The multiplication also produces two in ideal. And it will produce, in fact, four spectral lines. One, uh, let's say, block corresponding to the difference of frequency and another one to the sum. I don't know. It's a large experiment. Uh, this effect can be used to transfer spectrum from the one frequency to another. Should I start it today? BTV. Next time, should we start uh, at 10? Or, as usual, 12 uh, we have only one lecture at 12.30 next time. So maybe it's preferable, preferable to shift it up or not? Uh, we can. Okay. Maybe we, let's do it. Let's shift it up. I have time. In theory, I have, I have an hour. I have an hour. I can assemble this experiment. I can do it. idea, 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 I have signal. Use S2. This is a frequency omega 2. It is called heterodine. Plus that. And use a filter at a frequency, this one has omega 1, omega uh, minus omega 1, or omega 2 plus omega 1. And see what happens.